Let's begin with a word of prayer. Our gracious Father, we thank you for this blessed day. And what a blessing it's been today, Lord, to be in your presence. And Lord, to uh, fellowship with you. And Lord, to worship you in many aspects of our life. God, I pray, Lord, tonight that we will listen to your word. And Lord, just uh, pray that your word will captivate us. And uh, your word will uh, just uh, do wonders in our heart, Lord, as we talk about uh, something that is special to me. And God, I pray that uh, you'll just uh, be with our services Sunday, Lord, as we prepare for that. And Lord, continue being with our pastor as he studies. And God, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, I just want to make sure you're awake out there, and you are. I saw one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen, and I've seen what I'm going to describe to you. I've seen many, many times in my life. But in just a couple of weeks ago, I was looking uh, in the eastern sky, and I saw the most beautiful rainbow I've ever seen in my life. And it just seemed like it was the biggest one I've ever seen. It was the most spectacular one I've ever seen. And it was the brightest one I've ever seen. And if you've, if you've uh, looked at uh, rainbows, it's usually, on, uh, it's usually uh, has a real dark background because of the clouds and the light that is shining on it. Well, this was just illuminating that way. It was just an incredible, incredible sight to see. And immediately, the thought that came to my mind was this. Only God can do that. As a matter of fact, what I began to think about was that uh, uh, God has done it again. God put another rainbow in the sky. And so it be, I began to think about uh, that particular thing. And so we're going to go, we're going to revisit uh, some Old Testament scriptures, and we're going to revisit uh, the flood and Noah's Ark for just a moment, because that's when we see the original, the first uh, rainbow uh, that is found in scripture. And so I want us to uh, turn to Genesis chapter 6 to begin with tonight, and there are some more outlines there. If anyone needs one, I did uh, get a chance to get those made, and I appreciate our office staff for getting that done. So if you need one, just lift your hand, and Ted will get it to you. All right, Brother Ted, I think everybody has it. So as we go back and we begin to look at the flood, I want us to see the reason for the flood. And I think we all know what the reason is, but I want us to read it found in Genesis chapter 6, beginning in verse 5. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. So we see that the reason for the flood was simply this, sin and ungodliness. And folks, uh, we live in a society and a culture today that is full of sin and ungodliness, and we do know that one day judgment is going to come. It's not going to be by flood, but it will come by fire uh, from the Lord. So uh, we understand that. So we see the reason for the flood, but what is the reality of it? Look in chapter 7. And look at verse 11 and 12. In the 600th year of Noah's life, how many of y'all would love to live to 600 years? Anybody? <laughs> I think some of us struggle to, to, to live as long as we have, right? But he was 600 years in the second month and the 17th day of the month. On that day, all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. And I was reading that verse, and I got to thinking about our mission trip we had to Nicaragua a few years ago, and I never will forget the first night uh, that we were there in our dorm. First of all, when I walked in the dorm, there were ants this long, crawling everywhere, and I'm thinking, oh me, I don't know if I'm going to sleep in this bed. But we get to, you know, we, we finish up the day, and we, you know, we're, we're building, uh, uh, doing an inside of a building, and we've worked hard, and we're really tired, and, and we go to bed, and it begins to rain. And I will tell you, and Charles, I believe you were there, it's the hardest rain I've ever heard in my life. I thought the roof was going to cave in. It was raining so hard. It wasn't hail, it was just rain, that tropical rain. And so I can imagine what it was like when the, when the fountains of the earth and the, and the windows of heaven were open. And it says the rain was on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. 
And then in verse 23 it says, So he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping thing and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. And folks, there are people who say that, the, uh, that Noah and the ark was a myth. I am here to tell you upon the word of God, it is a fact. It is a reality. It happened. And uh, God did destroy this earth. But what are the ramifications of the flood? Well, we find in, uh, there in verse 23 of uh, chapter 7 again, he destroyed all living things, all but eight people were killed. Now think about this. Society had to begin all over again. And we, we, can, we could talk about that and we can go through all of that, but we certainly don't have time to do that. But I want you to, to see that God used different things that I see in the Word of God that He put in the sky for us to pay attention to. And I got to thinking about it, and I thought about the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. You remember uh, there in Exodus chapter 13, where they were uh, uh, coming upon the, the Red Sea, and Pharaoh and his army were coming after them. And, and you remember the story of how God used that, that cloud by day and that pillar of fire by night to uh, keep them at bay. And then in uh, Numbers chapter 9, we find that uh, the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire were used and was symbolic of the presence of God as the cloud would hover over the tabernacle. You remember when uh, they were, it was like a tent, and, they had, and every time the cloud moved, the tabernacle, the people were to move. And sometimes, and, and God has a sense of humor, maybe God, uh, he would hover over it for a couple of days and then they'd move. He'd hover over it a couple of days and then they'd move. Then he'd hover over it for a year, then they'd move. But the presence of God was always over them. So there's the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire, which is symbolic of his presence. He's with us. He's above us. He's under us. He's before us. He's behind us. He is in us, his presence. But then there was the star. And you remember the star, the Christmas story? The star speaks of the preeminence of Christ. And that star, it was a special star, the only time it's ever appeared in the sky like that. And it says this, that the wise men asked the question, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And so this was a special star. And I believe it is symbolic of his preeminence. He is above all, before all, and all in all. Amen? Matthew chapter 2 tells us, uh, as, I'm, as I quoted a moment ago, we've seen his star and we want to come and worship him. The book of Revelation, Jesus himself said, I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. So we see that pillar of cloud and pillar of fire. We see the star, but there was another thing that was in the, in the sky, and that was the rainbow. And the rainbow is symbolic of the promise of God. Listen, folks, God is a covenant promise-keeping God. And I want to say this. I know that the rainbow and the rainbow colors are used in ways today that it shouldn't be used. Amen? But I want to tell you, God made something very special. God made something very unique. The devil has takes everything that God wants to do, and the devil wants to pervert it. And that's exactly what's happening in our world today, a perversion of the colors that we find in the rainbow. But folks, I'm going to keep standing upon the Word of God. Amen? And His promise, God is a covenant-keeping God. Romans 4.21 says, Being fully convinced that what He has promised, He was also able to perform. There is not a promise that doesn't come through. God always comes through with His promise. Well, when you think about it, in my lifetime, I've never seen a pillar of cloud or a pillar of fire. Have you? I've never seen that in the sky. Now, I see stars all the time. You can go out and look at stars, but I've never seen that bright Christmas star as they saw when Jesus came. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. I see rainbows all the time, and that is the thing that it remains today. And I believe that it has much meaning to it, and I think it's also a constant reminder to us that Jesus was raised up into heaven as a token of God's promise in salvation. 
So I believe the rainbow is actually a picture of Jesus. I really do. And when we look at the colors of the rainbow, you're going to see the significance of that. So let's think about that for just a moment. The color purple speaks of royalty. Does not the Bible say he is the king of kings and lord of lords? He is royalty. The color blue speaks of heaven. The Bible teaches us that he came from heaven. He came from the portals of glory and he came and he put on humanity. He came to die on a cross. He came to earth from the place called heaven. The Bible says that uh, in John 3.13, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is, in, that is the Son of Man, who is in heaven. And so the color blue speaks of heaven. The color green speaks of new life. Who gives life, folks? God gives life. You know, uh, when I was in school, in elementary school, one of, the, one of the prominent things that was trying to evade our education was... Uh, Evolution. I mean, it, Darwinism was very strong when I was, and I didn't believe it. I, 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 there was no way I was going to, I, 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 there's no way that I would came from a tadpole. There was just no way. I mean, you know, I just couldn't believe that. And when you study the Word of God, you, you understand it is God who creates us and gives life. And I love what Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the, say it with me. Life. So we get life from Jesus. How about the color yellow? Well, yellow is, talks about light or really sunlight. And the Bible tells us in John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And so Jesus is the light of the world. And folks, we're to be his lights as well, are we not? So... We need, to, we need to spread the light of Jesus. But the color orange speaks of warning. The Bible teaches, and in John chapter 3, Jesus and Nicodemus were having a conversation, and Jesus said, you have to repent. You must be born again. He said, well, how in the world can I go back into my mother's womb? No, Nicodemus, you don't get it. You've got to be born from above. You've got to be born again. And, and uh, Jesus uh, really uh, taught him, that, that it's so important and it's vital that we repent and be born again. And then the color red. Folks, we know what that symbolizes, the blood of Christ, the blood of Jesus. You see, there are those that say there are many ways to God, but I say there's only one way to God, and that's through the blood, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. It tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, I want you to turn there. I want you to see this. 1 Peter chapter 1. Verse 18 and 19. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ you don't have that phrase underlined in your Bible, you ought to. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. And so when I look up and I see a, a rainbow, and I see all of its majesty and all of its splendor, I immediately think about the glory and the majesty of God himself. For he's the one that put a rainbow in the sky. Now, how do we get a rainbow? How does a rainbow develop? Now, I'm not a meteorologist, but I know that you've got to have a couple of things for a rainbow to, to happen. And one of those is a disturbance in heaven. And within that storm or within that disturbance, there's got to be water and, you know, there's got to be rain. You know what I'm talking about. You see rain around. Well, we haven't seen so much around here lately, but you get the idea. You've got to have a disturbance, but you also have to have sunlight. And that's when you see these spectacular rainbows, when you see the light bouncing off of those clouds and forming that incredible color. Well, I believe that 
uh, the, the storm, you have to think about the storm of Calvary. You have to think about what took place at Mount Calvary. The sin of each, each and every individual that has ever lived or ever shall live was placed upon the Son of God. But then, three days later, what happened? He rose again, amen? And that's what sunlight represents, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Someone put it like this, and I wrote this down, and I like it. It said, the sunshine of his resurrection shined through the drops of his shed blood and produced the heavenly rainbow of God's eternal grace. So he put a rainbow in the sky, and every time we see it, we ought to be thinking about the grace of God and the mercy of God. We ought to be thinking about the salvation of God. Not what culture is trying to pervert, to, to propagate today and send a message about today. It's not about that. It's about the salvation of Jesus Christ. So I want you to notice some facts about the rainbow. And if y'all listen fast enough, we'll get done in time. Okay? The first fact is this. Man did not ask for the rainbow. You know, Noah had no idea what a rainbow. He'd never seen a rainbow. By the way, how many years did it take for him to, uh, how many years did he preach that they need to repent because judgment was coming? 120 years. But can you imagine you know, building a boat, building an ark, and gathering all the animals up and, and all that. And God used that as the tool of deliverance. God used that ark. And by the way, the ark is a type of Jesus Christ. It is a picture of Jesus Christ. And I don't have time to go through all that, even the shape of it, the length of it, and all it, it, and, the, and the atonement, the kafar, that, uh, the pitch, that the tar that was put on the outside and the inside. All of that is a picture of of Jesus Christ and his, and his blood atonement. But it was a ve vehicle of deliverance. And can you imagine when they walked out of that ark after that 150 days that the water was on the earth and then it finally settled, they settled on Mount Ararat and they come out of that ark and what do they see? A symbol, symbol of deliverance, a symbol of love, a symbol of salvation. God saying, I'm never going to destroy the earth like this again. We're going to start over. We're going to, we're, going to, we're going to make this work. But man didn't ask for that rainbow. It was God's idea. And I want to share something else that was God's idea. The cross of Calvary was God's idea. To send his son to die on a cross was his idea, not ours. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. And folks, we need to be thankful for that. We need to be amazed about that. You see, we cannot initiate any movement toward God. Man would never have a desire for God unless God called first. And He's called us. He is not willing that any should perish. But there's a second fact about a rainbow. Man cannot destroy a rainbow. I've never seen anybody try to go up uh, with a with a broom or with a mop or or fly through it or whatever, trying to destroy a rainbow, you can't do it. Well, I want to tell you this: man cannot undo the work of Calvary. Man can't undo it. They might try. They may try to sweep it under the rug. They may try to avoid it by not thinking about it. But I'm going to tell you, they cannot change what happened at Calvary. They can't change the fact that Jesus died for all of mankind. Folks, it's settled. The critics, the liberals, the infidels, or the in for hells, as I call it, can never change the work that Jesus finished. So man cannot destroy a rainbow. Well, number three, all men see the rainbow the same. The Spirit reveals Jesus the same to all men. If you want to go to heaven, you've got to come through Jesus, folks. And it's by His blood. And so it's that way, whether there are people who say there's many ways or not, it's, it, it's, they're, they're false. Only Jesus is the way in which men can get to heaven. An example we find is in Numbers chapter 21. And 
this is one of those stories that, um, you know, uh, the people of Israel, and, you know, they're wandering around, and they're complaining. None of y'all have ever done that, right? They're complaining about what's going on in their life, and all of a sudden, God sends fiery serpents, and these serpents begin to bite them. And the Bible says in Numbers 21 that they began to die. They, people were dying because of this. And so they came, and they were re- confessing and repenting of, of their sin, and they came to Moses, and Moses began to intercede upon their behalf. And so God said, well, Moses put a serpent on a pole and put it in the middle of the camp, and all of those that look at it shall be healed. That's another picture, another type of Jesus Christ. But can you imagine Jesus being on that center cross? He was in the middle of it. And all that look to him, all that look at the cross and believe he's the son of God, believe they're sinners and call upon his name shall be saved. Acts 4.12 tells us there's only one Jesus, neither is there salvation in any other For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So all men see the rainbow the same. We all have to come to Jesus the same way. Well, God looks upon the rainbow, number four, and remembers his promise. Where's Jesus right now? Well, I'll tell you where he is right now. And I want you to turn to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, and we're going to see that. Hebrews chapter 1. Let me begin in verse 1. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself, notice that, by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Where's he at now? (laughs) He's at the right hand of God. And you know what he's doing there? Keeping his promise. He's making intercession on your behalf. He's looking after you. He he uh, He is loving you. He is providing his grace. He is keeping his promise. Well, number five is this. The rainbow touches both heaven and earth. You you think about a rainbow as it goes way up in the sky, the heavens, and then on earth. By the way, any of y'all tried to go find the gold at the end of the rainbow? There's not going to be any gold at the end of the rainbow. 1 Timothy 2.5 says this, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Listen, folks, I don't have to go to a confession booth to an earthly priest. That's not what the Bible teaches me to do. What do I need to do? I go to my high priest, who is Jesus Christ. He is the mediator. So the rainbow touches both heaven and earth. Jesus and the cross touches heaven and earth. Well, number six is this. The rainbow cannot be taken back. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 9. Look at verse 12. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. What does the word perpetual mean? Well, it means never ending. So from generation to generation to generation to generation to generation until this earth comes to an end. This covenant will stand. This promise will stand. It is perpetual. He said, I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Look at verse 16. The rainbow shall be in the cloud, and I will look on it it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And let me just throw this in. This is kind of a soapbox material, but let me throw it in there. You know, I have no doubt that there's, well, this particular year, there's no doubt it's been hot. Of course, they claim it's all this global warming and all that, but I'm going to tell you, the book of Genesis says as long as there is seed time and harvest, there will always be winter, summer, fall, and spring. 
I'm going to trust God in that. I'm not going to trust politicians, okay? I'm going to trust God. You know, another thing on that soapbox is, you know, they say, well, we broke a record from 1952. Oh, it was this hot back in 1952? Or back in eight, well, whenever they started keeping records. But, uh, Oaks, just trust in God. It's going to go from generation, his promise from generation to generation. And then number seven, and if y'all listen for the next three or four minutes, we'll have it done. Nobody has ever seen a complete rainbow. You ever seen one? I've never seen one. I've never heard of anyone seeing one. Well, folks, nobody has ever fully comprehended all that Jesus is and can be. Not, on, not in this world. Not as we're journeying through this. There's, well, there's a lot about Jesus we do know, but I'm going to tell you, there's a lot that we don't. But in heaven, we're going to understand. Now listen to this verse. Revelation chapter 4, verse 3. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. Now listen. And there was a rainbow around the throne. Folks, we're going to see a complete rainbow one day. And it's around the throne of God. And in a, around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Folks, we have no idea in our finite mind what heaven's like. But I'm ready to go, aren't you? I want to see this rainbow. I want to see my Jesus face to face. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. Folks, the half has never been But God said, I'm going to put a rainbow in the sky. I'm putting it there because I want, I want generation after generation to understand who I am. I want them to understand that I'm going to keep my promise. And folks, God has always kept his promise. And when it comes to Calvary, when it comes to Jesus Christ, and when it comes to salvation, God is wanting to save Everyone, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. So, next time you see a rainbow, I want you to think about heaven and what, is, what a rainbow is really going to be like once we get there. All right, let's pray. Our Father, we thank you again for your word and Lord, just something very simple tonight and Lord, just uh, a reminder, and I hope an encouragement, Lord. I know it encouraged me as I looked at it today. And Lord, I just I thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. God, I just pray, Lord, that you'll just uh, take these words and uh, you know melt them in our hearts and captivate our hearts with it. And Lord, I just pray for, uh, Lord, as we go into our prayer time, Lord, I pray, Lord, it'll be a time of worship. And uh, Lord, as this has already been, and God, I thank you again for, our pastor, I pray you'll be with him and protect Miss Lori. And Lord, I pray she'll have a better night tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you have, uh... We thank you for joining us this evening at Rahel Baptist Church. And may God richly bless you.